This video provides three examples of checking arguments for validity on a three-circle Venn diagram. The first example is, every dollar spent on rent is a dollar spent on shelter. No money used to obtain shelter is thrown away. So, no dollar spent on rent is thrown away. So is the conclusion indicator, so we can tell that our last sentence is the conclusion. No dollar spent on rent is thrown away. We need a letter to represent dollars spent on rent. I call that R. And we need a letter to represent thrown away, things that are thrown away. I call that T. Conclusion of our argument, no R is T. Now for the premises. Every dollar spent on rent is a dollar spent on shelter. That's the same as saying all are, are dollars spent on shelter. Let's call that S. All are, are S. Second of this, no money used to obtain shelter. That's the same as dollars spent on shelter. No S is T. Now we've abbreviated our argument and we're ready to check it on a three-circle Venn diagram. We need a circle for R, a circle for S, and a circle for T. All R or S is a shading premise. We have to get rid of everything that's in R, but that's not in S. There are two regions like that. Here are the regions of R that aren't in S, so we have to get rid of those. No S is T is also a shading premise. It says there's nothing that's in both S and T. So we have to eliminate the overlap between S and T. The overlap between S and T is this football right here. So we have to eliminate it. The conclusion, which we aren't going to represent on our diagram, we're just going to look for, is no R is T. That says nothing is both R and T. The things that are both R and T would be in this football. But we know from the combination of premises that that football is empty. So we know that the conclusion has to be true if the premises are. Notice that if I had shaded the conclusion and then looked for it, I would have found it. Our method of checking for validity is represent the premises. The first premise is this crescent shaded in. The second premise is this football shaded in. And then check to see if the conclusion is contained. The conclusion would be this football shaded in, and it is, so this argument is valid. Okay, second example. Some money spent buying a house goes to interest. So some money spent buying a house is thrown away since everything that goes to interest is wet. Identifying the conclusion is easy since there's a so here and that's a conclusion indicator. Our conclusion is some money spent buying a house is thrown away. We could represent that this way. Some B for money spent buying a house is thrown away. Since is a premise indicator, so this, everything that goes to interest, is thrown away, is a premise. All I, things that go to interest, is thrown away. The first premise is up here, some money spent buying a house goes to interest. Money spent buying a house, we call that B, so some B goes to interest. We call that I, everything that goes to interest, we call I, so some B is I. There's the abbreviation of our argument. We need three circles to check it for validity. B, I, and T. Now remember that a sum premise 
requires drawing an X. We have to draw an X inside of B and inside of I. This football is the overlap between B and I, but there are two regions inside that football, so things aren't as easy as they were on a two-circle Venn diagram. We can't confidently put the X up here because that would say some B is I and not T. We can't put the X inside this region because that says some B is I and it's also T. All this premise tells us some B is I is that there's something somewhere in this football. We don't know if it's inside T or not. So we have to put an X on the line of T to reflect our uncertainty. We don't know whether this X goes inside T or outside, so we put it on the line. Okay, premise two, all I is T. That's a shading premise. It says everything that's inside I is also inside T. So we have to push the I circle all the way inside T. There isn't anything out here, that's what shading that region means. Now notice, if this region is empty, then we're no longer uncertain about that X. We know that X must be in here. We didn't know that after the first premise alone. But after we found out that these, these two regions were empty, we knew that X must be right here. Okay, now let's check to see if the conclusion is contained on our diagram. Some B is T would be an X inside B and inside T. Do we have that? We've got an X here in the middle. Is that fully inside of B? Yes. Is it fully inside of T? Yes. So we have an X that's both inside B and inside T. If these premises are true, there must be an X right here. And if there's an X right here, then this conclusion must be true. So this argument is valid. Okay, let's do another example. Final example. Some plants aren't alive. Some things that aren't alive are dead. So, some plants are dead. The conclusion here is some plants are dead. And P or D is a fine way to abbreviate that conclusion. Premise one, some plants aren't alive. Some P are not a, where A is the alive things. Some things that aren't alive are dead. Some non-A, some things that aren't A, are D. There's the abbreviation R argument. Let's check it on a Venn diagram to see if it's valid. We need a circle for P, a circle for A, and a third circle for D. Now we represent the premises and look for the conclusion. Some P are not A. We have to draw an X inside of P, but not in A. So in C and A, there are two regions that are inside of P, but outside of A. We have to put an X somewhere in this crescent-shaped region. But we don't know if we should put it out here or in here because we don't know whether or not that X belongs in D. So we have to put it right on the D line. Now for premise two, some non-A are D. That says there is something, there's an X, outside of A, but inside of D. Outside of A, but inside of D, is in one of these two regions, either here or here. Now we don't know if that X we're going to draw should go inside of P or outside of P, so we put it right on the P line to reflect our uncertainty. Now we check for the conclusion to see if it's contained. Some P are D. That would be an X inside of P and inside of D. That would be an X inside this football shaped region. Do we have that? We have two partial X's in there, but we don't have an X inside of this football-shaped region. So this argument is invalid. 
Notice that two partial x's don't add up to a whole x. We put this x right on this line because we didn't know if it was inside the football or outside the football. Same for this x. We didn't know if it was inside or outside. A valid argument must guarantee its conclusion, and if it's possible for this conclusion to be false when the premises are true, then the argument is invalid. And for all we know, this x could be out here, and this x could be out here. We weren't sure, that's why we put those x's on the line.